Hello, this is a video showing the Basic operation and getting started information uh, for the one I'm calling right now, at least a SCUF computer improviser. Uh, it's still in early uh, beta form. So um, first thing first, um, the files themselves. So the program that you want to run is the SCUF computer improviser running on Max 8. Um, it should work completely fine in the, the free version of Max 8, but you won't be able to edit anything. Uh, and then here are, the rest of the files are all dependencies. Um, so things, customized objects of mine that you need to be able to reference. Um, and so, and then additionally the fiddle dependency, which must be in the search path of MaxMSP to work. You see there's a number of objects, a gen object, a TFFP, a one JavaScript file. Um, these are all be referred to in uh, when you launch the scuffed computer improviser. And if they're not, Available, it'll appear in the Max console there, and you know that there's a an issue with um, Max finding what it needs to run. Um, and then the only other dependency besides Fiddle, and Fiddle is include here included here because both the Mac and PC version, because um, it's not an official package, um, um, and so it needs to be sort of manually added. But the only other dependency are the ML uh, dot is the ML dot Markov object, which is part of the ML star library. Um, so if I open up package manager, you'll see um, you just search for ml.star. And there it is, Benjamin D. Smith, ml.star. It's a bunch of machine learning um, objects. And I use the Markov, ml.markov object within it. So you just have to add that um, package and it should work fine. Um, I hope to get rid of both those dependencies in a, in a later version, but for now they are working just, just fine. Um, okay, so when you launch the patch, uh, it won't actually be sending audio through. This is like this because I'm recording the audio directly from Max for the video, uh, but this, it'll be turned off by default and you'll have to hit initialize to get it to the state where it is now. Uh, in fact, I'll just, you won't hear me for a second, but I'll close it and watch it through. It's obvious. There. So um, close those windows for a second. Um, so the initialize starts it up. The stop will stop, obviously, if you're running into problems. I'm going to turn on the compressor because my microphone is really hot, and so to avoid clips, I'm just compressor. Um, um, it is stereo by default, but it supports up to six speakers from mono to six. Um, you will, in stereo mode, you will only see the first two meters of the mc.meter object being used. Uh, but the, if for the electronics meters, you will see all six, and then there'll be some down to whatever you choose for your speaker array, array in the master output here. Um, I suggest adding some reverb before the end. So you would, um, if you're using stereo, you would use an mc.untack object um, and then take the first two outputs of that, run it through reverb and then run it. To either you could put it back into MC or just straight to a DAC after your reverb. Um, sort of like how uh, it is here. We have the mc.untack six and I would just take the first two um, into the SF record. Uh, similarly, you take the first two into the reverb and then out of the reverb into your DAC. Um, about this patch has some basic instructions. This is going to be, this is all redundant to what I'm going to say now. Um, you want to have, make sure that the attack detection is working reliably and you want to make sure um, that you have as little latency as possible. So the lowest vector size, signal size, and schedule and overdrive are all on. Um, sorry, vector size and signal size the lowest possible where, where the CPU usage is still reasonable and then um, schedule and overdrive turned on. Um, and lastly, sample rate should be at 48. Uh, otherwise, um, the windowing function won't be quite right and you'll end up with some clips um, when in the electronic playback. Uh, and then if you, if the attack detection is not working reliably, if you go into guts here, the sub patcher, 
um, you'll see that there is um, uh, the listener. The brains are where the fun stuff happens, but I'm not going to go into detail with that right now, but it's all sort of there to look at if you're interested. But the listener is just using the fiddle object to get um, attacks, to get pitch data, to get amplitude data. And then there's two other things, getting brightness and, and harmonicity data. Um, so the really, the, the number that you want to be changing to make attack detection more or less sensitive is the second number of real attack, which is the amount of decibel change it needs, or rather the uh, increase in decibels within a, within a window um, of energy in order to have it register as a detect. So if I put this really low, there'll be att attacks all over the place. Um, that's all about that, 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 yeah. So it's, it's really sensitive now, um, but it's still actually, you see I got a sort of an extra one there after I stopped speaking. Um, if I put it up to like 30, it'll be not very responsive. So it's not getting individual words anymore, but it will get the start of a sentence or if I take a break during a sentence. Um, and this could actually be useful depending on if you're using an instrument, your microphone, or um, how you want it to hear the attacks because the improviser will, um, uh, the improviser will segment and analyze the audio according to the attacks and it will also uh, react to you according to attack data so it's a, it, along with other data but it's an important part of it uh, so it needs to be sort of to your to your liking so if you were saying doing a long like long tones with strong attacks and that was your whole improvisation then this would be a good setting it's not sensitive enough for me right now so i'll put it to 15 where i sort of like it for um, vocal stuff Okay, and then for the improvisers, there are th there's sort of an open close button here, which opens the behaviors. Um, there are nine behaviors and four gestures that are sort of that the improviser can call on. The uh, the feedback or the FB toggle that will feed the audio from the first improviser back into the input. So this so then it could be used to train another improviser, or it could be used um, to trigger. Uh, itself even or trigger another improviser and then the train button is um, um, how it, the improviser sort of gets the audio data that it then uses for improvisation so it's an audio corpus based improviser so when you hit train it will start recording into a buffer and it will um, analyze for attacks pitch information brightness harmonicity amplitude as it's coming in, and then it will use that data for its improvisation um, when it's called upon. And so you can either, with the on and off, you can either have that um, beha do these behaviors automated, so it'll, again, not very intelligently, but, but somewhat reactively to your input, change around what behavior uh, it's using, or you can leave that uh, automation off and just turn on and off these different behaviors manually. Um, so doublers, follower, the follower is very close to the doubler, but it sometimes will have sort of, uh, or I should say a doubler will kind of double your every attack with a different, um, a different um, trigger of a sound. Um, follower does something very similar, but it will sometimes uh, like kind of continue on without you a little bit. Reactive will kind of fill in when you stop playing and, and, and kind of fill in the, the gaps more or less. Um, leader will more or less ignore your live input and kind of come up with with music. Uh, and it's it, it's the, the leader one, it sort of just fills the texture in a way. The imitator will try to kind of piece back the audio you trained it with in a somewhat intelligent and coherent way. It ig mostly ignores your input, uh, your live input, I should say, but it kind of it's designed to sort of continue whatever style you were doing for the imp input, uh, or uh, rather the original training. The matcher will um, uh, uh, try to um, try to match to, to the best of its ability the incoming audio. So it'll try to sort of follow you in in a, in a way, and you get some very interesting results with that. And it's it's a match setting by default, but you can also hit differ. 
and in that case it'll try to find audio from the corpus that is as different as possible from your live input. Um, and then uh, and then there's inverts, which is sort of like it just it generates kind of a cloud of sound that sort of pulls back when you get loud and it gets loud when you get soft. So it sort of inverts the amount of energy in the in the in the sound. And then there are four different gestures here. I won't go into detail, but they're uh, they can be called upon by some of the behaviors, or they can be hit manually. Okay, um, so I think that's everything in terms of the GUI and what everything does. So now I will do a demo. First, I'll train the first improviser and then sort of show the different um, behaviors a little bit. And then I'll put on the automation and train the other improvisers and sort of try to make a, a fuller improv. Okay, so here we go. Uh, 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 so now if I put on leader, it should just sort of spit out a whole bunch of sound. So I'm getting clicks in my input, which is a little frustrating. Um, and that is the fault of my audio interface, not this uh, project, um, but anyway, so, so we'll just go on and ignore that. Imitator Markov, it should sort of piece the different things together a bit. Uh...
sure, um, unfortunately, the clicks make it sound rather lousy, but at least that sort of how to make it work and hopefully enable you to uh, play around with it. Um, the Because it's audio corpus based, it's um, really only sort of as interesting as the audio you feed it. Um, but it, uh, I would say that um, uh, without the distraction of the clicks, at least for me, I would be able to be a bit more um, musical about it. And my hope is that it uh, will be sort of an interesting thing to interact with during an improvisation. Um, and that uh, I would encourage to sort of play around with the different settings. You might be able to find ones that you enjoy more. And because this is sort of a beta testing phase, um, I would be interested in any feedback you would have in terms of things you liked, things you didn't like, behaviors you were drawn to, um, suggestions for other behaviors, uh, really just about anything. Um, so enjoy.